So for the 2023 or 2022 Citroen C5, what they've done is they've adopted Citroen's new design language. So particularly up at the nose here. So what they've done is a more modern front, but also a lot more vertical. So a lot more in tune with the C4. The chevrons are a little bit more spaced out and a lot more sort of piano black to them. And the piano blackness sort of comes across all here. So it's very, very shiny and glossy. The V-shaped headlights here, or the V-type headlights here, uh, very, very modern and 3D look. So again, with this piano look or this piano spacing bit, get back here. These little inserts here are personalizable, so you can choose the color you want on those within reason. And that actually goes on round the side, which we'll go to now. The size and shape is still the same, but the when you come to the profile, a few modifications. So of particular interest is obviously the hybrid badge you want to make sure that it is a hybrid you've still got the protective rims around here and also the 19 inch feet black and glossy just like the rest of the other black and glossy bits and the mirror caps the roof wraps here are slightly away for roof rails are slightly away from the vehicle here so slightly elevated great place to put your massive oversized uh, I don't know maybe inflatable croissant and tie that down from there and the big point here is this air bump now the insert is now the same color or you can interact it with the same color on the front so if you want the red white and blue or whatever it is you can have that which is cool and the other bit this back panel here is now black and glossy interestingly you can't open up the fuel flap here without opening up in there it's kind of pressurized and if you want to plug it in it's around the other side we'll get to that in a minute there's actually quite a lot going on in the rear end so roofline spoiler the lights are actually three-dimensional so and actually there's three of them there should be something in that tricolor thing but they're all all red you've got the chevron which is in black and a sort of chrome outing from here obviously your air cross badging and your hybrid badging and also fake exhaust so there is no exhaust tip back there it does have a kicker tailgate which is cool and what that does opens up to around about 430 460 liters i'll see if i confirm that but the big thing in here is when you pop up here you can actually have a tray so if you want to get your picnic going on here or your croissants or maybe if there's an oil leak you can shove it under there but we won't do that because it's not going to break down let's see what powers this thing this c5 hit air cross has basically got behind here the battery is a 13.2 kilowatt hour battery that's good for around about 47 kilometers of ev only range also if you want to power it up using a 7.4 kilowatt home charger or wall charger it takes about two hours so not bad 47 kilometers for two hours worth of home charging great let's look under the bonnet what we have here is a combination of a 1.6 litre pure tech engine or ice engine and also an 81 kilowatt uh, electrical motor. Combined they give you 180 kilowatts of power and 360 newton meters of torque, which is basically plenty, especially for this size motor. Anyway, speaking of things that need charging, Matthew's inside and he'll show you what's going on in there. I've had my coffee this morning, so I'm pretty charged up. But this interior, well, it's got a few flashes of color that make it lively as well in the same way. The first place to look, well, that's the seat. So the top of which are covered in a nice sort of blue leather, which complements those blue accents on the outside of the car. In typical Citroen fashion, comfort is, of course, the first priority. And these seats are filled with that extra foam to make it extra comfort comfortable for you. You've got the sort of memory foam in there that'll mold to your body and shape so making it really like your bed at home frankly you would never want to get up from it the other cool things about this car is the various flashes of blue again to complement those exterior accents so you get some stuff on the door cards there contrast stitching get some contrast stitching on the dash over there as well little things here and there to brighten up the interior a bit speaking of the storage and the practicalities it is a family suv of course you get generous sized door bins down there with actual space for bottles it's pretty neat you get a wireless phone charger in there you get some storage space in here a couple of cup holders a nice deep glove box which you can actually sort of it takes up more than half my arm so that's pretty generous there and of course you got a, a glove box over there so it's pretty practical all around in terms of materials well you've got obviously those leather covered seats nice and comfortable 
top of the dash there is soft but you do get a, quite a bit of scratchy plastics around especially on on the top of the dashboard there where there should probably be softer stuff but for the most part everything that you touch is quite high quality and rather soft too now this 10 inch touchscreen here has a pretty sharp looking interface there you can see here i'm on the uh, general car sort of settings and that sort of is controlled by these icons down the bottom here so if i want the various apps and connectivity i just press the four squares there and get this set up there the car button there that brings up a whole lot of different settings to do with the car in terms of your sensors and controls and various other things and if i move into vehicle settings there's a few more things i can customize there like the locks and the actions and all that stuff so it comes with a cool little note as well every time you press the buttons notice on either side you have permanently have the air conditioning temperatures and you have a shortcut there to the air conditioning as well as down here on this set of shortcut buttons there it is a little bit annoying having to go into the screen to change the temperature and fan speed and all of that but citroen have at least made it as easy as possible to do so including shortcuts there for the seat heating but really the key thing with the screen is if i press that little lightning bolt button there and that brings up this sort of electric e-save monitor so you can see there that's the current mode i'm in fully electric the battery stack and the motor you can see there and then i can look at my trip statistics as well in terms of how i've charged and utilized the battery as well as the petrol engine charging this is pretty cool so i can set the the charging time and the preconditioning if you like for the car too those are options and then when i go to e-save i can actually flick through and toggle between the different energy reserves so i can either have 10ks of range 20 or just top up the battery using the my driving style again it is a phev so you can plug it in and charge up the battery but if you have a have chargers which are harder to access this is sort of an easy way to top up your battery now the gauge cluster in front of the driver well that's in the the driving mode right now and you can see all of the vitals especially the ranges on the right side you've got your battery range there on the left side your petrol range and up the top you've got a gauge in terms of what your power consumption has been like the other really cool thing here is that little dial on the left which says what your zero emission range or what your zero emission driving has been like so far we've spent about five percent of our drive here in zero emission or fully electric mode but again based on that things will change in terms of the other range and, and gauges the cool thing with this screen is it's very customizable by pressing this button on the left side of the steering wheel well you can flick through the different so navigation based or you can set your own the thing i really like though is the minimum one when you've got a lot on your mind or in the night or something select minimum and it takes away all the the clutter and the different gauges and leaves you with a, a very clean outlook there of your speed the speed limit and then the other basic stuff like the headlights and gear it's a really clean interface there and that's sort of true with the steering wheel you've got only four buttons on this left side here your volume control speech and of course the dial to change this the display in front of you and then on the right side again just four buttons for your audio controls and phone that control the infotainment screen there if you're wondering where cruise control is well that's hidden down the bottom here on a separate dial but again keeping a nice clean interface and saving you sort of that clutter it's really well laid out now the interesting thing with the back here is as you'll notice that there's one two three four different seatbelt buckle points here well, I'll let you guess first. Answer in the comments what do you think that fourth seat belt buckle is for, even though there's only three seats. Well, now that you've had a chance to do that, let me show you. Now, the key thing for the passenger in the middle, especially, is your seat belt has two buckles, as you can see. So you've got to pop one down the right there and then pull this across to the left side there to buckle in. That's a pretty neat feature. Speaking of neat features, I really like the fact that the central tunnel is barely there, so I can sit comfortably in the middle, leaving space for two adults on either side of me, and everyone's got enough shoulder room, headroom as well, even with the sunroof, I've got plenty of it too. Again, with knee and foot room, there's heaps for both the passengers on either side as well as me in the middle, 
it is a really comfortable car to sit in and of course not to forget those foam seats all across the other key thing with the back here is all these seats the three of them are individual easy for me to say individually adjustable so i can pull each one backwards and forwards depending on what i've got in the boot for example speaking of comfort well there's really no way to describe the way this citroen drives over bumps and on the road so let me go and show you First off, I think it's undeniable that the level of comfort in here, when I mean ride comfort, is just really what you expect from a Citroen. We were just driving through a raggedy bit of, you know, gravel just now and you couldn't really feel any vibrations, any sort of bumps coming through to the cabin. It's true to what Citroen say, you know, you could drive over a, a field of eggs holding grass in your hand or is that, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I'd like a lot of people call things like this a, a, a was it a, a, a magic carpet ride? I've never been on a magic carpet. I've been on an airbed, being a, a journalist, and um, I, it does feel like that. It's really soft and and quiet, and actually being on an airbed, it, it's usually quite squeaky. But there's thankfully being this PHEV means that there's no no noise at all. It's just really ultra quiet. It's crazy. It is, you know, you can't hear any of the, the rough road surf surfaces, even when the engine's on, you can't really hear it. The cabin is so well insulated from both the road and, you know, the external noise. It's really, it's very comfortable to be in. Must say, I do appreciate the extra bolstering in these seats. Um, I do get the impression, though, that when I get out, it's a bit like a Homer seat. It will still have the impression of me sitting in it still. So um, I think you could probably make a, a die cast mold or something of my rear end if you were to get out. I, I, I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll be able to shake that image now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, visibility, let's get those stuff up. We've gone through the seats. Visibility wise, look, it's pretty good. The, the, the rear is, it's not massive windscreen back there, but it's, it's pretty good. The windscreen up front is great. Having the, um, the sunroof gives it extra light and, you know, the, the A pillars are, are good. It's, it's pretty good all around. I've got pretty good visibility, really. And I think in terms of keeping things sort of, clear and, and clean and all that stuff I've got to say a big ups to the doors because they open all the way so you know you don't get your pants dragging on the the side rails and getting dirty and stuff like that again helping keeping this interior clean and tidy tech wise pretty simple actually I, I think the, the the information that's delivered to you is is quite concise and easy to understand the recharge side of things I, I like the fact that you just put the B on if you want to get some, some recharge going on or off. I would have liked a, a two or three different sec, uh, sectors for the recharge. I would like it to be a little bit more abrupt had I wanted to be abrupt. But uh, on the whole, it's either off where it's really coasty or, um, yeah, some, some regen. The other thing with the charging is if you own this car and, you know, you're never charging it up by plugging it in, and not really using the battery at all. Citroen will actually, the car monitors that and will give you a reminder that, hey, you know, I'm a PHEV, you can plug me in and drive 47 kilometers on zero emission range. The thing I didn't bring up was the acceleration rate um, on this, and this is actually slightly slower than the, the its petrol um, siblings. So this is around about 8.70 to 100, and the petrol version is 8.2. But of course, the petrol version will give you um, a emission. Uh, sorry, a, a an efficiency rate of around about six point two liters per hundred, and this one's just one, one liter per hundred. Not bad. Wow. Um, and speaking of the electric and the fully electric component, you get you get forty seven kilometers of range, WLTP. But if you're driving at one hundred and thirty kilometers per hour, that predicted range is halved and the actual extra bonus is if you're doing 130 in New Zealand you lose your license while some may say sacra blow about that license losing bit 
the key thing there is the the blur the blue as you saw the exterior of this car is highlighted in all the, the blue bits as well as on the top of the seats there but as is true with Citroen there is a level of customization you can have in terms of selecting one highlights you want that's pretty cool yeah so you can make this Citroen your own mon dieu the other key thing which we haven't brought up yet is the fact that there's an 8-speed automatic gearbox underpinning this powertrain and frankly it's just been amazing you can't feel any of the shifts even the shift from electric to hybrid to petrol is really seamless so they've worked that out very nicely but you can actually use the paddles as well if you want to get that sort of stuff going on it's not none of this stuff is instant instant but it's kind of it does what it's supposed to do you know you can change up change down even the screens are not ultra fast when they change their views but they're they're, they're certainly good enough everything including the um, the starter button does work on a little bit of a delayed time so you do have to allow it that let's give it the quirk there that suits me because i'm not in a rush to do many things Last couple of things, driving modes, as, as Matthew's probably gone through, the Sport is really quite cool. Um, I, I like the sporty mode as well as the hybrid side of things. But the other thing is it does have a 230 millimeter um, ground clearance. So therefore you can take it off road a little bit. And also the fact that it's turning circle is just amazing. You can turn on a dime or a, a centime or something. So there you have it, Citroen's new facelifted battery filled C5 Aircross PHEV. You can plug it in, you can fill it up, you can drive it wherever you want, and wherever you go, it's just a lovely, comfortable, soft ride. Tops up, um, I, I was gonna come with a oh, bomb or something like that. Anyway, that's my French done. But the range of this car is not done at all, and it'll keep you going for quite a while. Yeah, loads of actually 57, oh, sorry, 47 kilometers. That's enough to commute to and from work or if you work at home like me, you can just do nothing. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and see you on the next one. Au revoir.